a rational function graph together here. And so what I want you to know is it's all about the asymptotes. So essentially we're always going to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. We're also going to look for x and y intercepts. But beyond that, we're just going to table some values and, and really make our graph from there. So one thing that I want to encourage you to do is that we always try to factor the top and the bottom if at all possible. I notice the top has a common factor of x. So if I take that out, I get x, x plus 3. On the bottom, I get x. It looks like x plus 3, x minus 2. So I want you to notice something here, that we have a couple of factors that cancel out. I'm going to rewrite f of x as some new function here. We're going to write this as x over x minus 2. What I want you to know is that this, because we have some cancellation here, it means we're going to have a whole at x equals negative 3 in our graph. Um, but it also uh, looks just like the graph of this function here. This graph we're making now is going to look like the graph of this function here, except for this function here is a little bit simpler to work with. So looking at what we have here, we talk about domain. We would want to take out a positive 2 from our domain because that's what would cause us to divide by 0. So when we look at this, we would say negative infinity to 2 in unity with 2 to infinity. And also, our vertical asymptote would have to be at x equals 2. So you notice these kind of coexist or go hand in hand here. Um, when we look at x-intercepts, we call these the zeros of our function. Um, that would mean if I set the whole thing equal to 0, what x value would cause this to be true? So when we look for x-intercepts, uh, we're going to just be very, very clear here. The only thing that causes the whole fraction to be 0 is if the top is 0. So we're going to make a little note here. x-intercept is at zeros of the numerator polynomial. Okay, it's so the zeros of that. So if I set x equal to 0 and solve it, I get x equals 0. And in terms of y-intercept, how do we find a y-intercept? Well, remember, to find a y-intercept, all we're really doing is tabling a 0 for x. So plug in 0 for x and find out what y equals. I suppose we would get 0 over 0 minus 2, which is 0 over negative 2, which is 0. Okay, so we get this 0 here. In terms of horizontal asymptote, now here's where we compare the degree of the top and the bottom. And I notice the degree of the top is 1, the degree of the bottom is 1. So we go equal degrees. That means we have to look at our leading coefficients here. So we would say y equals leading coefficient of the top over leading coefficient of the bottom. We get y equals 1. So in terms of putting these graphs together, no doubt, no doubt, if you have these asymptotes, this is the first thing we always go put on. So I'm going to take my time here, try to make this look nice. x equals 2. You definitely want to label all asymptotes. So I'm going to say x equals 2. And we have y equals positive 1. So that means that our, our horizontal asymptote runs this way. Okay, y equals 1. Uh, we know that we have an x and y intercept at 0. Beyond this, though, we don't really know what this looks like. So here's my rules. You find any vertical asymptote, and what we're going to do is we're going to plug in two x values to the left of and two x values to the right of any vertical asymptote. So that would mean if this is at 2, I'm going to table 0 and 1. I'm also going to table 3 and 4. And so looking at 1 here, we would get 1 over 1 minus 2 we would get really 1 over negative 1 or negative 1, box it, okay? Uh, here we get 3 over 3 minus 2. So 3 over 3 minus 2 would be 3 over 1. 3 over 1 is 3, box it. And then 4, we would get 4 over 4 minus 2. When we plug this in, we get 4 over 2, which when we box it here is a 2. So all we're going to do now is just go graph all these points. 0, 0 is already on here. 1 comma negative 1, go right 1 and down 1 would be here, okay? Right 3 and up 3, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 would be right here. And then right 4, up 2 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 2 would be right here. So you can see that our branches of our hyperbola here would run this way. It's not very good just because my computer screen is hard to write on, but we would get these branches right here. So you can see that it lines up with our domain. Our domain was all x values except for at 2, right? Okay. Cheers.